Oh, man. So before we start the video, I just want to say I'm truly sorry for not uploading videos for like the past month because I've been so busy with exams and I have my final assignments as well. But since today we're talking about <laughs> construction management, I guess it's probably best for you guys to experience or to see what I'm going through right now. It's just very busy because I'm in my third year, um, first semester for the third year actually. And so it's been incredibly busy for me to try to set up my schedule with uh, assignments with exams and now I'm in my final weeks of the exams I got two more tests to go I did my first test back in uh, last Friday and so <laughs> I just have two more tests to go and then I should be I should be finished with this semester assuming that I don't fail of course <laughs> okay so before we start to talk about project management or construction management I just want to put a full disclaimer out there that I'm not a career advisor or a you know, immigration agent. I'm just a student who is doing university at Sydney. So to give you an idea on what project or construction management is, it is essentially facilitating or control a project from the start to the finish. So it's a pretty straightforward concept. You deal with a lot of planning uh, and communicating with the clients and overseeing the project, making sure that everything is complete properly and to ensure that everything on site is safe. You will learn a lot more about construction management theory itself at Western Sydney University. So if you're interested about the course itself, I'm not going to go in depth. I feel like I've done way too much studies for it and I just need a break for now. <laughs> but construction management at Western Sydney University is a four years course for a full time student. And I said in the last video that construction management belongs to the School of Build Environment. And for the School of Build Environment, it mostly deal with architecture, industrial design, and construction management. So for construction management at Western Sydney University, unfortunately, it is only offered at Parramatta South Campus and Penrith Campus. So if you happen to live in Liverpool or you happen to live in you know, Sydney City, for example, then you're going to have to do quite a bit of traveling. So when I finished high school and I first started to apply for uni, I applied through UAC, which is like a college entrance exam score kind of thing. And so back then when I was applying for construction management at Western Sydney University, I think it was 70.29 ATAR, 70.4, something like that. But now it changed from 70 to 80 for Parramatta South and it is now at 75 for Penrith. So the reason why the ATAR changes every year is because it is dependent on how many students are doing the course at the campus. So if you have way too many students doing the course at one, at one campus, for example, at Parramatta South, the uni will try to increase the ATAR score just to make sure that there is less students going to that campus for that degree. And instead they shift over to another campus instead. It's to make it a bit easier to control with the amount of students doing the course. So if you recall, the cost for construction management at Western Sydney University is about $30,000 per year for two semesters. And you need about 1200 hours of work experience, practical work experience to complete the degree on top of the academic uh, requirements that you have. And by saying academic requirements means that you should be keeping up a good score with your GPA. But currently when I'm making this video, all of my classes are online because at the beginning of the year, we still had some COVID cases here in Australia. Now it's a bit back to normal, but by the time I finish editing this video, then there's going to be a few more cases. So I hope that anyone who is living in Sydney right now, <laughs> stay safe, wear your mask, just be careful. You don't want to get fined by the government. But yeah, uh, since all my classes are online for this semester, that means all of my exams are also online this semester. Honestly, I don't really mind doing my exams online just because it is a lot easier to study with my friends that way. But I can understand that it can be very different and difficult for people who are not used to that kind of environment and who needs to have that face-to-face -face interaction with the teachers to study. So yeah, even though online is has, has its own benefit and all, I really do hope that the classes will go back into face-to-face -face next semester. Okay, so that's enough of backtracking. Let's get back to the real topic. So what do you exactly study for construction management at Western Sydney University? Okay, so the, for the first semesters of the first year, you will be doing graphic communication and design, construction work safety, construction communication, and building one. <laughs> Sorry, it's been a while since I've touched those units. 
So essentially, these units will provide you with the basics for construction management, mostly deal with the architectural designs and how you should be able to communicate effectively within the construction industry. I will put a link to the details of the units in the handbook in the description below. So if you want to check that out, that is up to you. But it gives you a lot of great information on what kind of content that you need to be looking out for when you study construction management at Western Sydney University. Oh, I just also want to say that construction management deals with a lot more of the overall parts of the construction project. So it doesn't deal with just, for example, electrical or mechanical engineering. It deals a lot more with the management system for a project. And you have to be able to communicate effectively with the team leaders for the project and the stakeholders and the clients, all that kind of stuff, just to make sure that the client are happy with what they have and that everyone in the team is happy as well and that the, uh, the project is finished on time and everything is goes as smoothly as possible. <laughs> Man, I'm, I'm pretty fried with my words right now. I've been studying so much for the past couple of days. But yeah, the second semesters of the first year will be a lot more tricky since you will be dealing with enterprise law. Well, okay, let me rephrase that. For me, when I first had my second semester for my first year, I had enterprise law. Enterprise law at Western Sydney University is actually very, it's actually a very, very, I don't know. I don't know how to put this right. That won't get me in trouble. Difficult unit. <laughs> when I first did the unit, the tutor told me that for enterprise law, for that year that I had the, uh, the unit, there was 66% or 60% fail rate, if I remember correctly. So when I heard that, I was like, what? <laughs> so it was pretty scary at first for me when I started um, doing enterprise law because I didn't know what to expect and I didn't know how to do it properly. So I was happy <laughs> to finish the unit with the pass so that I don't have to redo it again. Okay, so the thing about the failing system at Western Sydney University is that you have three attempts for, for the unit. If you fail the first time, you can redo it a second time. And if you've failed the second time, you can do it a third time. After you fail the third time, you pretty much can't complete your degree. That's basically um, a KO for you. <laughs> that's why That's why I was so happy when I just got a pass for enterprise law because I understood how difficult it was for me to do enterprise law. <laughs> and I was just grateful to get a 54 for the overall marks. Besides enterprise law for the second semester, you also deal with accounting and enterprise leadership. So enterprise leadership talks about the strategies for the management that you can use to make you a better manager in a sense. And accounting just deals with, you know, all the numerical data in the constructions, budgets, that kind of stuff. Da, 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 da. Sorry, I hate math. Oh, that's why I do construction and not um, mathematics or science. In saying that though, for the first semester of the second year, you get to do material science. You also get to do building measurements. Building measurement deals a lot more with not just the measurement of the overall building, but it deals with the constructions of the small residential buildings. So essentially what that means is that you don't just go around the area and measure how big this building should be, but you also have to measure the materials required to build that buildings and all of the numerical data for that project. And when I say numerical data, it just means, well, you got 20 kilograms of brick, for example, and how much would that cost to uh, use those bricks to build the buildings. I'm just giving an example. There's no way a building can be built with 20 kilograms of brick. <laughs> so yeah, there is a lot more to calculate for building measurements, but that is the gist of what I remembered from doing the unit back in uh, last year. I'm forgetting everything already. <laughs> oh yeah. So besides building measurements and material science, you also start your first construction technology unit, which is about civil. So for this unit, it talks a lot about the soil specifications for the building, building surveying and site environmental controls. It's a lot of stuff to talk about, but in short, it is essentially you studying how to meet all of the site requirements for the project. So when you first start out with a project, you need to focus on what type of soil it is, because if it is a reactive soil, you have to act on it right away and choose a good material or a material that won't be affected by that soil as much. But yeah, it deals a lot with site investigations and trying to know the 
geological informations of the project before starting the project. So the second semester of the second year, we'll talk about construction technology part two, which is about substructures. So substructures is basically the footings and the foundations of the building. So before you talk about the soil types, but now it deals with the footings and the foundations of the project. So you will be studying a lot about the concrete footings and the structures and what type of reinforcements the footings and the foundations will have. You also learn about building regulation studies, which is essentially sort of like building laws. It deals a lot with the building regulations that have been placed out there, just so the project manager or the client can check just to make sure that the project is, uh, when the project is finished, everything is safe to use and it is good to hand over. You also have modern construction enterprise and it deals a lot with, again, the, the leadership, the leadership and the management part of construction management, it's, it's a lot of theory work and I'm not going to go too much into that. So besides those uh, units, you also be doing a bit about building estimates and tendering. So when you're talking about building estimates and tendering, it's pretty much mean creating a bill of quantities. So a bill of quantities lists out all of the items that must be completed for that project and the approximation cost that is involved to complete that project. Now, this bill of quantities, however, does not reflect the entire cost of the project. There are indirect costs or unforeseen costs, essentially, that happens in those, in those projects. So for example, for scaffolding, you might hire a scaffold that costs about $60 per day or something like that. And the project is estimated to complete within 20 days. So you have about $1,200 to work with. But let's say that it starts raining and the workers can't really finish the job on time and the project gets pushed back by another five days. So now you have an extra $300 to pay on top of the 1500 sorry, on top of the $1,200 that you already have to pay. Yeah, so indirect cost is a lot more for unforeseen costs that happen during the construction that you don't really know. So most of the times when people start with a project, they have what they call contingencies cost. It's basically an additional cost on top of what you already have, just in case anything happens that cost can cover for that loss. But yeah, some of the concepts seems very interesting, especially with the creation of the BOQ. At the workplace that I'm working at, I've prepared a BOQ before and it's probably one of my favorite things to do just because you have a lot of things to look at. And so in the future, if I happen to want to do something, I might be able to go back and look back at these costs and say that, oh, so this item only costs as much. Maybe I should do this instead. Okay, let's talk about the first semester of the third year for construction management at Western Sydney University, which is where I'm at right now. So we have the continuation of the construction technology unit, which talks about the concrete constructions, that's it. So when you talk about concrete constructions, it deals a lot about the constructions of the concrete components of the building. For example, reinforced concrete, what will happen to it, how you are able to eliminate the corrosions or minimize the corrosions of the concrete. What is the minimum requirement of concrete thickness you should have between the steel reinforcement inside of the concrete and the um, external part of the concrete? Is this concrete reinforced or is just a thick slab that is poured on the ground? Yeah, you think concrete is easy? <laughs> Probably not when you start studying about these degrees. <laughs> But I find this unit very interesting just because for the final assignment of this unit, we get to pick our own project and talk about it, talk about all the different concrete components of the project, how they manage the concrete placements of the project and why do they use these concrete components instead of, for example, steel or timber, all that kind of stuff. Next, we also study about project management. Now, this is a bit similar to modern construction enterprise just because they have a lot of theories about how to be a good manager and all the different management strategies that can be implemented. It is also one of the three units that I have my exams for. I like all of the construction science and that kind of stuff, but I just don't like the concept, the all the theories about how to be a good manager and what kind of stuff to manage, that kind of stuff. I, I just find it very boring. I do find that some of the management strategies very helpful for the future just because they list out what you should do when you start out a project. So the next units that you'll be doing are construction planning and negotiation in the built environment. So construction planning just pretty much talks about what kind of stuff you need to plan for during the construction project. And for negotiation, this unit is a bit particular. You have to put yourself into groups of three and then you have to create a project based on
realistic examples. So what I mean by that is that you have to use a project based on your experience or someone else's experience and pretty much alter the information just because you know the parties for that project should not be disclosed. And after you pick that project, you will have to role play with your group to see who is the plaintiff and who is the defendant and talk about why this dispute happens for that project and why are you against the other persons and why should you negotiate this assignment would have to be one of the more annoying ones just because you get to group up with so many people so many ideas out there that you can use and people might have different opinions about how you should approach this dispute and in the end you have to come up with one solution so it is a lot to think about for this unit but i think that if you manage to get a hand of it it should be relatively decent <laughs> So for me, these four units this semester aren't as bad as I thought, except for project management. Project management is actually one of the worst ones, just because there are so many theories out there and the questions that they ask you require you to actually think and instead of just memorizing it. <laughs> now, I know that not memorizing is actually better because you actually understand the concept of what you're talking about. But some of the questions, I feel like it didn't really relate back to what I study at all. Either that or maybe I just didn't read the questions correctly. Now remember, as an international university student, you can always change these units around. So you don't necessarily have to do them in order. For me, I find it a lot easier that way just because I have friends who are doing the same unit as I am and they're also doing it in the exact same order which is the reason why I'm also doing it in the same order just so that I can have them in my group. So these are the remaining units of my degree that I will need to do before I graduate. So first will be building law for next semester. Building law will be similar to building regulation studies. It will talk a lot about all of the different regulations and restrictions placed on construction just to make sure that it is safe. And then you also have the fourth part of the construction technology program, which is about steel constructions. So steel constructions, in my opinion, is a bit more interesting than concrete constructions. Just because steel is so flexible, there are so many properties of steel and there are so many uses for it that you will have to learn a lot more about steel and concrete. I'll also be doing professional practice and construction in practice part one. I'm not sure what these units are though, so I hope that I'll be able to get to learn about them when I head to my second semester. So yeah, this will talk a bit about the fourth year of the construction management degree. You'll be learning about the construction economics, but mostly on the management side of the construction industry as well. But you also get to pick three electives from the remaining five electives that you need to choose from. So yeah, I haven't, <laughs> I haven't gone there yet, but by the time I get there, I hope I'll figure what I need to do and what I want to do with it. <laughs> Honestly, I can't believe that I'm actually one and a half year away from finishing my construction management degree. But yeah, hopefully this gives you a bit of a details about construction management at Western Sydney University. If you'd like to know more about construction management offered at Western Sydney University that I haven't covered already, just put a comment down below and I'll try to get through with uh, that comment <laughs> when I have the time to. But yeah, at the time of making this video, I still have two more exams left to finish my first semester of my third year for construction management at Western Sydney University.